from around the world, hello. It is I, Professor H. Shane Hawk, back here to present to you episode two of Hardcore History, IWS Hardcore History, our watch-along series, where we focus on some of the most epic matches in IWS history. Today, I have a special treat for you. A special, special treat. Two former IWS World Heavyweight Champions with arguably the biggest match in IWS history. I'm talking about a fatal four-way live from MTELUS, Speedball Mike Bailey, Black Dynamite Jeremy Prophet, Jack Evans, and Rey Mysterio. I've got with me today two former world champions, Speedball Mike Bailey and Black Dynamite Jeremy Prophet. How are we doing, fellas? Well, I'm doing fantastic. I'm sure you are, too. Doing great. Thank you for asking. Awesome. So, Gentlemen, before we get started on this match, watch along. Is there anything that you want to know about this match? Is there anything that sticks out in your mind? Is there anything, an anecdote, a quip, something cool you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I can only speak for myself, but without a doubt, this was the highest point of my career. Getting to be on such a big stage with such talented athletes, getting to show what I'm made of and what I'm capable of doing in front of a packed house of a thousand people, it was my time to shine. This was make or break. So for me, I had to bring it. There was no turning back. There was no letting those people down. I had to show I was the real deal. So this is as big as it gets when it comes to Black Dynamite, Jeremy Prophet. To give a much less exciting answer, this is how I treat every match. It's normal, whether it's Rey Mysterio, whether it's someone who's wrestling for the second time ever, I treat it as the biggest match of my career. However, this one was particularly special because I had just come off a stint with AAA in Mexico, where I had spent some time with Jack Evans, spent some time with Rey Mysterio, and I was looking forward to working with Black Dynamite, as I always am. So yeah, a blessing. It's kind of cool how you're always like the, the yin to my yang, but I think that's why we always mesh so well when we're putting the ring together. I think so too. Well, without further ado, let's just jump right in. Guys, let's watch along. Have you seen this back at all? This is my first Guys, time watching it. I've seen fan. clips years and years that ago, people have posted, but I have not, I have not looked at it again. No, I mean, the match is on YouTube, and I, I watch it fairly often. Uh, like I said, it's the high point of my career. So, you know, getting to be in there with you guys and, you know, getting to perform in front of that many people on such a big stage. Like, you know, we're being entrusted with, with such a huge opportunity there. And uh, I look back on it. Sometimes I say, you know, what could, what I, what could I have done differently, you know, and then I'm my own worst critic when it comes to that. You know, I know you're the same way. Yes. Where I look at it, I'm like, oh, I could have done this differently, could have done this better. But uh, no, nah, man, I, I think this is a masterpiece. I think that uh, just getting this opportunity, which, like we talked about, you know, I wasn't initially supposed to be in this match. Yes. And I do feel that the match we had before was one of the reasons why I got in there, you know, and the people demanded it, and then it happened. So you knew that this was going to be your match. It was you and Ray on the billing, on the marquee. Uh, we were even together in Nova Scotia on a show when the match got, or that Ray got announced that he was going to be there. Right. And in, in a lot of ways, and I never told this before, it, it was my plan to kind of shoehorn my way in there right from the get-go. Right. Because Ray didn't have an opponent announced. I kind of figured it was going to be you. I think we, we talked about it on the way back. Yeah. And um, I was like, I'm going to try my damnedest to, to get in there. I'm going to, you know, see what I can do with the things that I'm in control of. And uh, yeah, sure enough destiny manifested so, itself like it's it's probably been good for me in the long run but it's also a flaw of mine that i am like i've never like people ask me oh my god how did you feel in those like big moments in my career like wrestling in pwg how did that feel and to me it's like well my, my main focus was it was like in my head just another match i didn't have any like more anxiety than i normally do i wasn't excited i was just okay this is a different challenge and very specifically, this is how I need to approach it. Uh, very focused on the match. Like one thing, like I know it's a flaw of mine, and I should probably care more. <clears throat> well, there's a pretty big flaw right there that you know you kind of call on all the three of us out. Three of the baddest dudes. Well, one of the baddest dudes being me. They're they're a little bit more of a gentleman than I am, right? <clears throat> but uh, hey, we all make bad decisions every now and then. Well, it didn't work out so poorly. Um, I don't think uh, we all make mistakes, and the important is how you. The important thing is how you come back from them, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I guess, look, I just made a mistake right there, falling prey to Jack Evans. Thought I could trust the guy, but these things kind of happen in matches every so often. Right. 
It's interesting because it was supposed to be you and Ray, and I feel Jack and I both got added at the last second. Yes. Do you know why Jack was in there? I don't know why Jack was in there, but I'm glad he was. Like, so this is how I feel, and... Like, I know this would be a lot more romantic, this would be a lot more sexy if I, if I talked about how like, excited I am to work with you in the series. And I, I was, because it's an honor. But so I'm going to point to another, another promotion that had offered me a match with Ultimate Jim. He's also a legend whom I would love to work with. But like, I was like, why me? I'm already in Japan. Like, give it to someone who's going to get to have a great match with him and like get some some views based off of that and that'll really boost his career and I felt the same way about Rip Sear. like I think this because you guys were in, because you were included because Jack was included it just became a better match which is better for everyone not that a singles wouldn't have been great but the more the merrier I feel in this scenario and like I, I'm more than happy to have you work with Jack Evans and have uh, you work with, with Rey Mysterio and get to make an impression on them than just me and Ray. Yeah, no, it definitely looks good on a resume, and you know, I, I've not been privileged to uh, get to work with this many, you know, great talented people. Rey Mysterio is probably the most high-profile person, being a former WWE champion, world champion, that I've been able to be in the ring with. And I do appreciate. Uh, <laughs> how good of a clothesline that was and uh, how well you ate it. You know, it's always fun hitting you with one of those big moves. People don't realize how durable you are. I am. So me and Jack both have that in common where we bend, we but don't break. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We bend, but don't break. Jack event is, is literally like the, the, the like movement-wise, probably the best in the world at what he does. Like it's, it's absolutely marvelous. It's insane. And we had trained together. Again, I had been with Jack in Mexico where he lives for like two months a little bit before this, so I got to know him quite well. Over there. Also how light you guys are, because uh, believe me, I don't have the superhuman strength that you saw displayed right there, but uh, man, you guys light as feathers. I mean, you do? What are you downplaying your strength? Hey, I'm, 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 a, I'm a humble guy, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't believe the hype. I'm a very humble guy. I'll be the first one to tell you. <laughs> Brag there you go, bragging about how humble you are. It's what you got to do in this business. But, uh, yeah, no, it was cool getting to be in there with, with Ray and with Jack. Um, I mean, especially with Ray, no disrespect to Jack. He's a great athlete, a great performer. But, uh, you know, getting to be in there with Ray, someone who I, I've witnessed wrestle live and watched for many years, pioneered an entire style, uh, more or less brought the Lucha Libre style to mainstream wrestling. That is absolutely. And getting to test my skills in there. I mean, you know, people, you may be good in wrestling. I feel that I'm, I'm fantastic in all aspects of wrestling, talking, appearance, in-ring, uh, whether it be, you know, through violence and viciousness, intensity, uh, or actual athleticism. But um, no one really knows how good you are until you get to test your skills and showcase them with talents that people already believe are on that level. Speaking of which, look at you and Ray hitting some tag moves. Yeah. How about that? Did you think that would come up? Well, you know, I saw Ray and RVD do that same combination. Uh -huh. And I said, you know, Rob Van Dam, someone I kind of patterned myself after. He was a bigger guy, very athletic. So um, it was my idea that, hey, you know, let's, let's go for it. Let's go for that double team. There's I'll be a lot of stylistic differences in terms of wrestling between you and, you and I. But I think where we meet is RVD. <laughs> I always found RVD was able to get a great match out of all of his opponents. Yes. And it's, it's what I strive to do. I feel in a lot of ways it's what you strive to do. Yes. And um, I feel like it's what any any pro wrestler worth should do. Tries to do. Yeah. And uh, you're right. There are stylistic differences between us, but I think uh, mentally uh, we're very similar. And I always point back to a match that we did for a smaller promotion here. I may have even promoted the show in Quebec. And uh, I remember us just pushing each other, pushing each other. And I'm like, I'm not going to get tired before you do. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to keep going until until I sense that you're blown up. I, I ain't going to get blown up. I'm going to keep going. Speaking of which, this sequence that you just did with Rey Mysterio, I find that when you're working people that have been around for as long as Rey Mysterio has, the, like, the thing that they, they most, like, that they want to do the least is having to remember long sequences, which Ray in this match was, like, particularly, particularly generous with, like, in terms of he never, like, he wanted to just work as hard as he could. I don't know. I don't know if there was more people than he thought because this was a huge show and he sort of wanted to prove something. And let's, let's not forget, Ray had to go through a lot of turmoil just to get to this show. So that is the most interesting People don't know thing. that. Yes. I, mean, I think they do because it's probably been talked about. Well, I, don't I don't think it has. But 
Go ahead, Eddie. So what was it? He like got stopped at the border because he didn't have his something got stopped at the border. Think he didn't have his passport, so he couldn't fly in. Yes. So he had to rent a car, drive ten hours, something like that, just to be there. So you know the proters were all worried. I wasn't even made aware of any of this till I got to the show that Ray had to go through all of that. But he just didn't want to miss the show. Drove ten hours, used his uh, driver's license that allowed him across the border. Showed up dead tired. Springs back. There's a movie no. that makes me very sad. Didn't quite hit that, it. so just do it again. Lands at that time. Um, Bailey recovered quickly. Yeah, which is pretty humbling. Covers. Like, it's easy to think as a pro wrestler, oh my god, I'm, I'm doing so Folks, much. Uh, and Rain then you realize the guys like Rain Stereo who absolutely do to. not need to, this guy is still will do anything to make it to the show. You know, one thing I'm very proud of in this match, and you don't see it right now, but my tan was absolutely on point, and uh, I can see clearly yours was as well. Believe it or not, that's, that's <laughs> qu quite a few shades darker than what I'm used to seeing you. So, I was you almost look invisible when you're lying on the canvas. I do. I'm really, really pale. Um, which is even crazier considering I had just spent a lot of time in Mexico and did not get a single shade dark. Um, and there you see me throw punches, which I never ever do. Because again, if you see a punch, you know, punch back, it is the back of the But um, I'm a real big there's fan those, of your gear. There's those, by the way, those world famous kicks that you stole from Naomi. I did steal them from Naomi, that's right. The inventor of the Naomi kicks. The Naomi kicks, yeah. yeah. That's what they call it. When they did them in the 2000 Olympics in Taekwondo in Athens, the commentators were going, oh, Naomi kicks. The Naomi kicks, yeah. Um, yeah, I think your gear looks fantastic. On it. I don't know if it's the, the, the same pair of shorts. Uh, Ma Melvin Manhook style shorts. Yeah, I think you always point to him. He's a, a kickboxer, isn't he? He is. K1? Yes. Is that who you got it from? Uh, more or less the inspiration was, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know his name, but I saw him and I said I want to yes. go for the whole battle skirt kind of look. And uh, that must have that, that that must have hurt. That did. He fell right on my nose. I feel that was that was like like sphincter to nose right there. there right. No Absolutely. doubt about it. Is it? Did my nose bleed after this? I can't. Believe. I think your nose was busted. Yeah. And uh, you know, to your point, what you were saying about Ray and you know how you don't usually throw punches and, and all these things. What I appreciate about Ray was obviously I had met Ray back in 2010 when I tried out with WWE. Yeah. Um, at SmackDown, and he was one of the nicest people to me. He was like, "I'm going to watch your match. Yes. I'll give you feedback." He yes. didn't have to do any of that. And uh, I remember, like, he was like the last person I spoke to. He was the last guy to leave the actual show. Him and Matt Hardy were the two last wrestlers to leave after everyone had left the dressing room. And uh, he gave me feedback on the match. It was really nice to me. And you know, I brought that up, and we talked and everything. And I said to him, "You know, what what are you comfortable with?" And he was like, "Anything, anything. Don't worry about me. Anything you want to do." I'm fine with it. And I really appreciated that from him. Because, you know, let's face it, Ray's had a lot of injuries. Yes. You know, his knees are being held together yes. by uh, stem cells, bubble right. gum, and growth hormone, and, you know, maybe. So maybe. I think the fact that he was Allegedly. he was willing to entrust us. Hey, well, you know, man's had a lot of, a lot of knee surgeries. So yes. You, well, when you've been around for this long, you can't, like, you literally can't avoid it, I think. Um, I, I've been lucky in 15 years. No, no injuries, no concussions. So, uh, so to, I, I, I'm an anomaly when it comes to, to that. Credit, you and I have been to the gym together. And... You, your, your gym is basically physical. Uh, that, that also builds muscle. Like, so I've, I've been in the gym with Jack Evans as well, and all he does is like muscle ups and calisthenics and bar stuff, and which is like literally the opposite of how you work out. I know you're very old school, machine oriented, safety oriented, and I, I think I think that is a a big reason of why you've had so few injuries in your career. Yep. I, I think it's just you know by the grace of God. Because let's face it, doing it this long, and you know, I, I'm not one of these 15 years, uh, one show a week kind of guys. Like, you know, I try to wrestle as much as possible. I'm a firm believer that wrestling keeps you healthy. It, it just it makes sure that your body is calloused and that you can take the beating. I've done you know 30 days, 30 shows, you know, Sunday to Sunday, nonstop, doing moonsaults and 450s every show. So uh, you know, guys like us, you know, people expect a certain level of, of action when we're in the ring. So we can't go in there and half ass it. Um, but when it comes down to it, I do feel that consistency is key. You know, always being able to train every day. I'm in the gym every day, despite uh, you know gyms being on lockdown now. I still you know, train at home. But uh, when it comes down to it, for me, the training and the consistency I feel has contributed towards being able to stay fit and also to stay healthy and injury free. I think you're absolutely right, and I know this is true because Georges Saint Pierre said it, not me, and that like. Cardio and like conditioning itself, he, he applied it to mixed martial arts, but I think it applies even more so to pro wrestling. Mm. Like your conditioning and actual cardio, like. Goes up top, Bailey catches 
matter very little when you compare it to like how relaxed you are in there and how like your skill level and how much it affects just, like, how you move your body and allows you to yeah. save energy. But yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right about the quest. And there you hit the the ulti ultimate weapon. Is ultimate that weapon. That's yeah. right. You know, one day I'm gonna hit you with that. Please. I mean, if, you, if you're if you're, if, you're, if you're still around, well, it, it was actually my dream if we had a longer series of matches. Because I personally believe this is the highest point. Like you know, people watching at home, you guys are seeing the highest point of IWS here. Thousand fans in the audience, thousand plus. Big name superstars, pretty much all of us in the ring together. And uh, I had hoped that we would have gotten to continue this. I know we had a few matches here and there, but uh, you know, I, I could have wrestled you every day of the week, and I think the matches would have just got better and better. And one of my ideas was to actually hit that on you, hit your own maneuver, because I think it would have blown people's minds. So the only other person to ever try to hit the ultimate weapon... Try sounds like they failed. It, they did. <laughs> my, my tag team partner uh, in Japan, Mao, hmm. Tried to hit it on Masato Tanaka and his main event at Kuraken Hall with him for the DDT uh, title. He undershot just a little bit, mm. so it was like a shooting star double axe handle. Almost. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. It got him a good uh, near fall, but it didn't win him the match. Unlike you right there. Yep, with the 450. Steal the victory. Right from under my nose. And like I said, to me, this was the highest point in my career, I think the highest point of IWS. I think these are the kinds of main events that the people deserve to see, you know, guys like us in there. And, um, you know, if we're not on to bigger and better things by the time wrestling comes back around, uh, I'd love to run it back with you. I think that, like, that would be the ideal scenario, to be honest. This venue, that many people, you and I, singles, I just titled. Or, you and I as a team. I know I am one half of the tag team champions. I wouldn't mind teaming with you if this runs its course, or if you want to find a partner, maybe we could do that too. That sounds like a deal, I think. I will, I will, I will shake on that. No, I won't. Fascinating stuff from two of my favorite wrestlers in all of the IWS history. Folks, this has been Professor H. You've been watching us on youtube.com slash IWS Hardcore. Please make sure you like and subscribe. I don't know if we'll edit things in, but I'll make motions with my hands for you. If you want some merch, you check us out, www.iwsshop.com, and check us out on all of our social media at IWS Hardcore on every single platform. For myself, the IWS, the IWS Training Center, and everything we're doing here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, keep you entertained during the pandemic. We'll see you next time.